OK, so let's say you wanted to solve this quadratic equation. z squared take away 4z plus 29 equals 0. OK, now we could use the quadratic formula. You might want to prefer using um, completing the square. Let's go with completing the square. So z take away 2 squared uh, take away 4 plus 29 is 0. So we have z take away 2 squared. We've got minus 4 plus 29, so 25. So we've got minus 25. Then we want to square root both sides. So z take away 2 is going to be plus or minus the square root of minus 25, which is 5i. And so z is equal to 2 plus or minus 5i. Now, when you're using the quadratic formula, or this, it doesn't matter, right? You have that plus minus, okay, there. Now, the plus minus in there is giving you your two possible solutions, okay, for the quadratic solver. Now, what we say is that one of our answers, one of our roots to this quadratic equation, is 2 plus 5i, okay? The other solution, the 2 take away 5i, we refer to as the complex conjugate of the 2 plus 5i. And we give it its own little label, z star. Okay, so it's like to the z to the power of the star, if you like. Okay, but it does obviously doesn't mean that. So it's just z star is used to represent the complex conjugate. Now it didn't matter which one I labelled as z and z star. I could very easily swap those around. I could have uh, put that as z and that as z star. Okay. What you need to understand is that um, let's just pop it around the other way. What you need to understand is that if I am asking for the complex conjugate of a complex number, then all that's going on is that I'm changing the sign of the coefficient of i. Okay? So, for example, if I said that w is equal to 8 take away 3i, then the complex conjugate of w is 8 plus 3i. Now, we've seen this, okay, we've seen this working when we were dividing by complex numbers, okay? So if you had uh, 1 over 8 take away 3i, and you wanted to simplify that, okay, and have a real denominator, then you can multiply that top and bottom by the complex conjugate, the 8 plus 3i. So the complex conjugate of the denominator. And doing that will remove uh, the imaginary part from the denominator. OK? Now, once you've kind of got that clear of what the complex conjugate is in reference to another complex number, OK, what you need to understand is how it can then work with another complex number, or with its, with its pair. So if we said that z is equal to a plus bi, then its complex conjugate would be a take away bi. OK? Now, what we were doing when we were uh, simplifying those, the division, OK, when we were dividing by complex numbers, was we were multiplying the z by z star. OK? So if you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, You've got a plus bi times a minus bi. So you get a times a, a squared. You get the a times the minus bi and the a times bi, which knock each other out. And then you've got the bi times the minus bi, which is minus b squared times minus 1. And you just get the plus b squared. OK, so z times z star is the same as a squared plus b squared. OK. So if you had uh, z is equal to 2 plus 8i, for example, then z times z star is equal to 2 squared plus 8 squared. So 4 plus 64. Likewise, uh, if you had z is equal to uh, 3 take away 5i, 
then z times z star is equal to 3 squared plus minus 5 squared. So 9 plus 25, so 34. Okay, so that's how you can work with the complex conjugate and what it actually is.